rubble, a pretty good sized tree right yonder. <laughs> I looked at my screen, it looked like a smudge. What's going on guys? We just come off down here in this hole. We got a draw coming up through here. We found some places where it looks like a good buck has been traveling this ditch. And uh, got a rub right here, looks like from this season. And this tree hit on both sides. That side right there scratched up pretty good. He's probably coming in and out, coming up this draw right there. It looks like a scrape, don't it? Oh, it is a scrape, yeah. I didn't see that a minute ago. Yeah, we've already passed one scrape. On that tree, yeah. In here with the Michael Perry. How y'all doing? <laughs> Bring here with that Cedar Ridge Chronicles. Yeah. Daniel Williams. Hey, <laughs> we're doing a spot checkup. And we were just discussing the fact that our season last year was different than most seasons because right before the fall, before mass crop was dropped, we had a drought and everything on the top, all your brows on the top died. And then later on, there was no mass crop. So the deer made a level change as far as food sources that a lot of people wasn't used to, where uh, does were hanging around in laurel thickets, you know, eating laurel, you know, young laurel sprouts. And the bucks got to a point where they were hanging around cedar thickets and eating, the, you know, cedar greenery. So and a lot of people in Alabama are not used to stuff like that. So we were discussing that. You got to be able to, you know, a lot of people, even me, I, I, I got to the, where I kind of figured it out a little bit before it got too far out of season. But making that adjustment and part of being mobile is understanding or trying to figure out when you have and you're writing this stuff down and try to remember you know because this didn't happen this is the first year i've known of that didn't see anything of uh, hickory nuts you know? right and the <laughs> so, first year i've ever tried to hunt this forest so, but, made yeah, it kind of tough forest. but we kind of kind of was the point of today is trying to come in here and do something a little different than what we normally do historically and maybe try to find some spots where the deer would be if they weren't anywhere else because this last year kind of you kind of got stuck in the middle of deer season, really not knowing where to go or what to do because based on the previous year's sign, the deer were just were not there. Right. I mean, they just weren't. Yeah, the deer just made an adjustment and they made an adjustment to the food source. They also made an adjustment that, hey, we're not going to burn as many calories because there's not that much food there available. So they their, their bodies told them, we're going to just get found somewhere where there's minimum pressure and food to make it through the winter, which we don't have that bad a winter, but just to make it through till the till things start greening back out, your fresh browse. So, and then later on, we had some warmer weather where some green briar and stuff come back real good. So they, they kind of helped them out, but you just got to figure out that part and just keep it in your plan to be able to adjust when something changes, because a lot of times out here, to, and I, this one thing is what kind of blew my mind is everybody and i even thought it was like, well there ain't no acorns they're gonna move like crazy right yeah you know, you'll be able they'll to, be looking for food yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> the right right the opposite uh, yeah they find the food they found the food and stopped and that's where there's that they yep. conserved energy so you're better off with a crazy acorn crop because they're more nomadic they just move around more mm -hmm. to me so that, that helps they know out. there's food anywhere they yeah. go to even to look for does they know they can eat i think this year they got paranoid and just got hung up wherever there was food, they got scared to leave it. Yeah, they just got into conservation mode. They just, hey, we're conserving energy. You know, they didn't lay, they didn't really lay out a bunch of signs as far as rut, rut sign. You didn't see a bunch of chasing. So they conserved energy and just conserved their time, and their, their body weight, and just made it through the winter. Basically, just adjusted. So then the hunters, most of the hunters didn't adjust because they didn't kill that many deer this year. So, but right. Well, the people that I did do taxidermy for that killed over here, a lot of them had never killed a trophy buck before wow. and i noticed that too where it seemed like some of the guys that had killed before you know maybe killed smaller bucks or whatever had killed monsters in places they'd hunted all their lives and never seen a big deer right. so a lot of those deer were just adjusted. they were just adjusted yeah they were in different different spots so yeah. something that we're going to try to do today is figure out kind of what they would do in those adjustment periods so that we're not caught high and dry right in the middle of deer season we're trying to figure out what we're supposed to be doing there's another rub right there. Just come up here to the end of another point of a creek. We've got a licking branch broke off right here in a big scrape. Can't already see it from the reflection of the sun, but it's really big scrape right here under this branch. This big tree, you don't have a a lot of scratches on it, but that tree right there is ginormous. Fresh tracks. 
right there in that soft mud. Some of this ground's so hard you can't hardly see a track. Old rub on that tree. A couple of beds right here. Spot right here. It's kind of hard to see in the camera, but you can see that spot where it's mainly dirt. It's like the pine straw's all ground up. Another spot right here. Yeah, this is where one laid in old droppings from a couple months ago. Yep. Looks like a doe more than likely, but it couldn't. I mean, possible that the young buck. But you see them pinned in here. I mean, you got a giant drop off right here. We're on a little bitty bench, and then behind us is just a big cliff and thicket. They're just traveling this little edge right here. It was right down through there. Great, just travel corridor for them to get away from anything. Yeah. I mean, you, there's no way you could get in here without being detected. Right. There's absolutely no way. All right, guys, y'all check this out. We found some bigger sign now. Looks like it may have been done from this, this past season. But y'all can see this trail goes off through here. We're in some real steep terrain now. Just when we thought it couldn't get no more steep. It's done turned into a hole, but we got a old bed right here. Got a few droppings in it. Just like that last one. Come right over here is really nice. Another bed right there. And yep. there. Yep, sure is. Big tree right there that's skin up. And maybe, it looks like this one right here might have been. I can't tell because this is more recent or not. Like it has been in the past. I don't know how fresh that is. We're just gonna keep around this edge and see if we can find anything else interesting up in this thick mess. Where this draw is kind of coming in, it gets real steep right here. We're getting higher in elevation, but that drop off is just getting steeper and steeper, seem like as we go. And when it, when it turns and kind of comes up this lip, got a bunch of big rubs right here on these pines and cedars. Just about every one of them. And this area right here has got a rub on it. These are good-sized trees. Um, real bucky-looking spot is what we're sitting here talking about. But there's a ridge. You see this little point? It's a real narrow point. It's not probably 20 yards wide. It runs right through this thick stuff, and these little pines. And you've got the occasional white oak tree down through here. A bunch of white oaks right off down in there, off that next point. And these deer can come right up here and bed. We found several beds down here on this trail. That, you know, maybe buck beds, maybe doe beds, but even on these little fingers like this, a buck could get up there and lay down, be able to smell anything below him, see anything below him from either direction because this, this ridge is so narrow. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to walk up on him from either way, 100 yards, 200 yards in here in the wintertime. Nope. He'd see you all the way across. I mean, you, you can see 200 yards in here right now. Uh, just an ideal place for him to get and hide. Hard place to kill him, but a good place to grow him. My kind of spot, if you ever figure out how to Find them on the outskirts somewhere, slipping. Sure is. Yeah, he cut that corner. That looks like a fresher. It may have been from this year, being on a softer wood. Well, that's pine tree, ain't it? Yeah, he, yeah, he smoothed it out pretty good. That is a big tree. Amazing what you'll find in the middle of absolutely nowhere. I mean, it really is. It's the you know, it's the kind of place that you expect it to be here when you get in here. It's just yeah. making yourself come in here. <laughs> well, that dang wind got that tree. What snapped? It's still green, but yep. Yeah, this is like a textbook place that because I've talked about this before on some videos and stuff. If you just you, know, you take your toe poles or you just take out walking on a ridge, anything that comes off of it, any kind of hump, spur, point, whatever. Circle that thing, you know, make elevation changes, but crap, because all it takes is like this place right here is the right one. I mean, yep. I mean, you can't. Well, you're 50 yards, <laughs> 50 yards in either direction, and you'd never know it was here. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the perfect place in the middle of absolutely nothing. Yeah. I mean, it's just golly. I mean, got a crazy bedding point. Historical rubs, like like everybody dreams finding. You know, most people ain't gonna find them. They, I'm just looking this way and see five. And they're not big in down there. And there's probably some more you can't see because of some of the greenery, but every big buck is coming through here because we're pretty sure, you know, we're leaning toward them being doe beds because it's multiple, but who knows? 
mean, it could be a buck. Now, the buck's going to bed with them at times off when they're getting close to being in heat anyway. So, And being that they, all these rubs is here, it's during, you know, <laughs> the rut times, uh, pre-rut or whatever, they, he's been, they've been checking on them those. So. And like he said, you cannot get here. No, you can't. Tough. And that's why they're here. They always pick them places. But you want to know where these places at, then you can kind of hunt the edges and, and hope to, you know, get them. Or you might, if you're slick enough where you can push it and find the buck bed and sneak there to them, you might be able to do it. But it's it's hard to me but where the bucks can bed. They got so many places out here they can bed. They could walk right down in there and bed on that thing, bluff thing, and you ain't. And there's probably places they can get yeah. off of it that yeah, we wouldn't they think can, they could. Yeah. They've got escape routes already planned out and. A lot of that they just transfer when the big buck dies. Another one kind of takes its place. So they kind of keep them historical. So, but it's a, I mean, it's an awesome place. Yep. So. Makes you wonder what's around the next corner. We're gonna keep walking. Yeah.